Good evening everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's time for us to continue with the Young Ones Series 2, Episode 1, Bambi. Um, it's a very popular series on both the YouTube and the Patreon channel, of course, because it's with Rick and Adrian. Um, so we shall just head right on into it. Please remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, that you uh, consider checking out the Patreon where you can get early access to these episodes and everything else we're doing. Plus, in the About section, you can find a full list of everything that's happening on the Patreon, both early access series and exclusives. You can see there, early access, exclusives, original series, and more details are available of what we've got going on there. So go and check that out. You can join from just one dollar a month, which is about seventy pence, eighty pence maybe, depending on current rates. Um, and you still get some content for that, which is incredible. And no other channel allows um, any, allows their uh, patrons to have exclusive content for that cheap. So yeah, take advantage. Let's go. Amazing to tell you. Answer the phone, Neil. What? <laughs> Answer the phone. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, floppy disks. Floppy <laughs> disks. Anyway, look, never mind that. Hey. What do you mean, never mind? What do you mean, never mind? Get that might have been a very important call, Neil. God, you're a complete teacup, aren't you? Teacup. Mug. <laughs> anyway, listen, guys. No, no, no. You listen. I've been waiting here half an hour. Half a bloody hour, Neil. Being hungry, waiting for my tea, and listening to that bogey bum. <laughs> oh, and that's my fault, is it? Oh, yeah, it's always my fault. Why didn't you cook your own tea, Vivian? Because I do not cook the tea, Neil. You do. That's what we agreed when we first came. You do the cooking, I'll look after the plants and the goldfish. Yeah. And what did you make me cook on that first day? Uh, sausages. It was a Tuesday. Yeah. Sausages and... Sausages and plants and goldfish. <laughs> oh, I discharged my responsibilities, Neil. Now you discharge yours. Hey, Mike, that sounds like a cue for a really dirty joke, doesn't it? Shut up, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> What's this, Neil? Leftovers. Uh. Neil, I hate you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Pick on me. I mean, I've already had personality hassles from a... What's up with you? Why do you suddenly want attention? <laughs> He's just sat there with his... Yeah, this complete stranger came up to me, right? With his head on my leg like that. I'm just looking at me. Oh, he's gone now. Personality hassles from a complete stranger today. Hey! There's a dead rat in there! Grab! <laughs> yeah, this Actually, what was that made of? It had like, it was like white on the inside. <laughs> you see, look, what's it made? Is it like cake? Oh. Yeah, this complete stranger came up to me, right? And called me smelly. This complete stranger shouted smelly at me. I wouldn't have minded, but he was a hundred yards away. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, I mean, when you've been called that from a hundred yards away, then, yeah, there's things that need to change. Just, just a tiny bit, Neil. You can tell me, truthfully, do I smell? Yes. Yes. Come on, guys, I can handle it. You can tell me, do I smell? What do you mean, yes? <laughs> what do you mean, yes, you smell? 
Smelly. Okay, is it just me? I know it's really early on, but Neil seems to have gained a bit more confidence. Like, in series one, he wouldn't have been like, what do you mean, yes? And he said that in like a, you know, a confronted, confrontative, is that a word? Where, you know, like, confronting sort of way. Like, what do you mean, yes? In series one, he wouldn't have been like that. He'd have been like, yeah, he'd have just taken it on the chin. He seems like he's gained a bit more confidence. But that's just me. <laughs> we mean yes, you smell. Smell it. Yes. I mean, come on, guys, I can handle it. You can tell me. Do I smell? What do you mean, yes? <laughs> See? We mean yes, you smell. Smell it. <laughs> Great, yeah. Sit down, Neil. Sorry. <laughs> Hands up, who likes me? Guys, no wonder Neil's smelly. According to the house list, it says the last time we went to the laundrette was the 23rd of October, 1981. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's wash day. But why, Michael? I myself have three pairs of socks and three pairs of knickers. But that means I've only worn them 269 times each since the last wash. I said, hands up, who likes... Rick, we heard what you said. <laughs> Now, guys, brace yourself. There's no avoiding this, and I'm not talking about my chopper. We are going to the laundry. Oh, no, please. Oh, not the laundry. Why don't you like me? I do. Because you're a complete bastard. <laughs> Vivian, I'm being serious. <laughs> so am I. You're a complete bastard, and we all hate you. <laughs> I find that rather difficult to believe. <laughs> do you want to bet on it? I'll put down a fiver. Yeah, me too. You can count me in as well. Yeah, no, no, uh, I don't bet. Coward! Yeah, yellow chicken. Oh, I don't, I'm not scared! <laughs> yeah, yellow chicken! <laughs> right then, a fiver! Oh, I haven't got any money. What about that tenner I lent you this morning? For your sister's operation? <laughs> you haven't got a sister, Rick! You're the classic. Why does he need to be lent a tenner for his sister's operation? This is in England. So I should have been getting it for... Is it to travel? What? what eh? <laughs> Example of an only child. <laughs> all right, all right. Are we going to bet or are we going to piffle around all night? Then a tenner. Quiet, everybody. The bet's up. Right. Hands up, who likes me? <laughs> right, that's it. I'm going to kill myself. Then you'll be sorry. No, we won't. <laughs> Does anybody want the last chip for you? I didn't even want the first one. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, you zeros. <laughs> Does anybody want the last chickpea? I didn't even want the first one. <laughs> hey, I do. I don't mind chickpeas in a in a curry. They're all right. In fact, I've got a nice curry. My have yeah, well, You know for this. What's going to live on after you die? I'll tell you. Nothing. That's what. Uh, can you, like, actually kill yourself with laxative pills? <laughs> I don't... Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to be spending the rest of the episode in the bathroom. Stay and find out. Yeah. I think I'm going up to my room for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this house will become a shrine. And punks and skins and masters will all gather around and hold their hands in sorrow for their fallen leader. And all the grown ups will say, But why are the key? How can you lead all three of those together? Be the leader of all three of those at the same time? I, I, they're all against each other, aren't they? I assume skins mean skinheads. What? The grown ups will say, but why are the kids crying? And the kids will say, haven't you heard? Nick is dead! The people's turret is dead! And then one particularly sensitive and articulate teenager will say, <laughs> the kids, do you understand nothing? How can Rick be dead when we still have his poems? And then another kid will say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, guys, quickly! One of Vivian's socks has escaped. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Human beings the size of amoebas. Here's your afternoon tea, Dr. Carlyle. Uh, thank you, Janet. Oh, it, it, Dr. Knight the Nine O'Clock News is here to see you. Is he? Dr. Well, Knight. <laughs> Conceal this sticky bun by placing it precariously on the edge of this box. Show me. Prepare yourself, sir. I have a patient outside whose deformities are so grotesque that you will question how the Almighty could suffer such a blasphemy upon his earth. Calm yourself, Doctor. Not the nine o'clock news. We are men of science. We fear no worldly terrors. Pray remember, sir, he is human. He is a man. It's an elephant, Doctor. You unfeeling bastard, sir. Sorry. Hope that... That's a real elephant that they've just walked into the set. And the actor, this actor's just, yeah, like, they wouldn't allow that these days. Perhaps he might understand. I am an elephant, you know. <laughs> In there, it stinks. If you, huh? if you can't keep control of your socks, you shan't be allowed to have any. Huh? Help! I'm being hassled by a killer song. Kill. Kill. All right, all right, calm down, Vivian. It's not the gas man. <laughs> Boom. Very fast now. Very fast now. Guy and what? <laughs> Bring me down and hassle me, Rick. I'm really confused. I'm just not feeling myself today. You could do a really good joke, couldn't you? About feelings. <laughs> Shut up, or I'll kill you. Okay, guys, come on. As the one guy said to the other guy who was Five getting fed up, I'm getting fed up. I want to wash my smalls. And I don't mean to put it in a glass of water. Camera. Let's go. Right. And take that step. Jesus days. Christ, look at him! At Auto Trader, we know what your car is really worth. <laughs> Join the millions who value their car with Auto Trader, Britain's biggest matchmaker. To verify. Order. Let's go. Right. And take that stupid curly bonnet up. Wow, he actually really nailed the voice. That stupid. That that bit. He nailed it. Right. Let's go. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Clothes have come alive. Ah, everybody's leaving! Get on with it, Neil. <laughs> no way. Oh, wow. Techno fear. It's happening again. All the machinery's ganging up on me. Vivian! Get out of the way! Ah, they're each other again now, right. Neil, me and machinery have a very special understanding. 
Don't give me any gym, you bastard. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. This calls for a very special blend of psychology and extreme violence. <laughs> oh, la dee da. Look what I've got in my laundry bag. All of Felicity Kendall's underwear that needs a good wash. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know you've got hygiene problems when you're having to literally wrestle the washing machine to keep your clothes in <laughs> and stop it from spitting them out. <laughs> oh my god, look! Now, make sure that the door is firmly shut. Oh, we've done that. Right, fill the tray with powder. Powder? What do they mean, powder? Gum powder? Curry powder? Cocaine? I mean... Cocaine? <laughs> maybe they mean washing powder, Mike. Really? Um, Oh, look, maybe if we got all the horrid sludgy bits out of the other machines, we could get enough. Stay in you carry on. Right, if you require condition... What are you tasting it for? Like, that's just for people washing their hair. Oh, we don't want to go mad. Right, insert two 50 pence pieces. I mean, what's so wrong with dirty clothes anyway? Yeah. You know what they say? Dirty pants. Wait, they're not paying for it. Clean body. <laughs> dirty duvet, dirty mop. What the fuck happened there? Why has that just popped up in the middle of this? <laughs> dirty duvet, dirty mine. Yeah, my knickers are so old. It's only the stubborn understains that are holding them together. Oh. Yeah, right on. One thing's for sure, when Lenin led the revolution in Russia, no way did he do it with a spotless bot. Yeah, I love my bottom spotter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's never wash our clothes again. Yeah. What do you mean again? <laughs> never done it the first we time. Be like the dirtiest students in the whole world. Yeah. Hey, hey, now there's a challenge. Oh. Oh, wow! Yeah! Oh, I just remembered what it was I had to tell you! Oh, cock and doodle do, Neil! What are you talking about? We've been picked, right, to go on University Challenge tonight! To the station! Music! This lot on University Challenge. Shit! That's actually them, isn't it? Fucking motorhead on the young ones. What? Well, that stepped it up a gear. First series, it was. Well, I didn't. I always. I didn't, when when it was the music break, I just took no interest. Then first episode of series two, fucking motorhead. Wow.
we'd missed the train wow. after all now. I'm just not going to be able to answer anything. I just know it. <laughs> oh, come off it, Leo, you little swatty pants. <laughs> God, just look at you, swatting away for teacher like a total spasmo. <laughs> God, well, you're really just an utter creep, really, aren't you? You've done loads and loads of work for this, haven't you? And I haven't done anything. Nothing at all. Come on, test me. What? Test me. Come on, test me. Come on, test me. You, test me. you hadn't done anything. Stop trying to be clever. Just take the book. Mm -hmm. All right, but verbatim regurgitations against my principles. I'm asking you to test me on it, not throw up on it. <laughs> right, now do it properly and don't skip bits. Don't get uncool and heavy. <laughs> don't get uncool and heavy. Crop rotation in the 14th century. Right. Crop rotation in the 14th century was much more widespread. Considerably more. What? It's considerably more widespread, not much more. <laughs> well? Well, you said do it properly. Well, not that much, you stupid bloody hippie. You said do it properly and don't skip bits. How was I to know that wasn't important? Well, it wasn't important. All right. Now, shall we just get on and stop wasting time like this? Right. Crop notation in the 14th century was considerably more <laughs> Oh, Rick, I love you. Considerably. <laughs> He was considerably. Considerably. After. God, I know this. Um, don't tell me. After. 1172. <laughs> well, that's No, but I didn't think it was important. <laughs> what was it? You just said not to tell you. I did not! I bloody well did not! You did, you did! You said don't tell me just before you said 1172. Yes, but that only meant for a minute. What, a minute from now or a minute from then? Look, just oh shut my up god! The so shut up and tell you the answer. Oh just my god! <laughs> John. Thank you. After John? John. Yeah, John is the answer. Crop notation in the 14th century was considerably more widespread after John. <laughs> Lloyd invented the patent crop rotation. Oh, yes! I knew it! I bloody knew it! You didn't, you didn't. You said 1172. That's not a bit like John. You spiteful little bastard, Leo. Just because you've done loads and loads of work for this, just because you're a creepy little swat, you've done about 50 million tons worth of work just like a girl, and just because I'm so hard and straight and cool that I've done absolutely bugger all. Because I'm so hard and straight and cool and I've done bugger all. <laughs> College Oxbridge. It's going to be really heavy and tough. Well, I've done my revision. That's the thing, though. You know, the university students, but we haven't seen if they're actually intelligent yet. They haven't done anything mildly related to education in this show so far. It's just been, yeah. Are they stupid? <laughs> the Daily Mirror Book of Facts. Did you know? <laughs> Would you think that's where they get the questions from? <laughs> World record for stuffing marshmallows up one single nostril. Six hundred and four. Toxic. Six hundred and four. My ass. Uh, world's stickiest bogey. Ah, oh, that's Toxic again. Really? The world's stupidest bottom burp. Vivian Britain. Says Rick. Britain. Yeah. Oh. See, I've done my revision. I'm going off now to stuff loads and loads of paper down the toilet. From one who did that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Do not lean out of the window. Wonder why. <laughs> oh, good heavens, what now? Somebody must have pulled a communication cord. Well, well, it wasn't me, matey. If British Rail want 50 pounds, they can just about bloody well go out and become a prostitute. Which they virtually are anyway, come to think of it. Right, commuters? Over here! Over here! Have a have a 
on, you bastard! <laughs> They'll be telling us they've been held up by Mexican bandits. <laughs> this is a pattern moustache, isn't it? He's Mexican, wasn't he? Oh, not him. He starts out as a peasant revolutionary, then ends up as a kind of moustache. He was another one, South American revolutionary, ends up as a sort of booty. Garibaldi, Italian revolutionary, ends up as a kind of biscuit. Actually, it's quite interesting, you know, the number of biscuits that are actually named after revolutionaries. You've got your Garibaldi, of course, you've got your Bourbon, and then, of course, you've got your peak free Trotsky assortment. <laughs> revolutionary biscuits of Italy, rise up out of your box. You have nothing to lose but your wafers. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> I never really wanted to be a train driver, you know. Really? You know, it's a rotten shame. I went to see the careers officer in Big College yesterday, and he said that all he got left was chairman of... Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie! I didn't know they were in this. British Rail. Well, I wanted to be director general of the BBC. Yes, and Rodney gave it to Scapper just because he directed our world tour of Hamlet and wrote our hilarious review, What Ho Dark. <laughs> Obviously, chairman of a nationalised industry. I'd rather be a cabinet minister. Oh, yeah. well, I'm all right because my dad has bought me the Socialist Workers Party for my birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least we're going to smash the Oaks up Scumbag College and mm. University Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> We've just got time before my balls drop. <laughs> Everybody apart from Vivian's doing this. Vivian's. <laughs> he never. He's just such a twat. You hadn't pulled that communication cord, Vivian. That man would never have thrown us off the train. Rick, he threw us off the train because you said Aslev was an anagram for total and complete bastard. <laughs> it's quite apart from anything else. It isn't even. Oh, shut up, Neil. If you hadn't been born at all, then we wouldn't even be here. Because there'd only be three of us. And three isn't enough to go on University Challenge, so it's your fault. No <laughs> way. Relax, Neil. He's a personal friend. I helped him get the baby shank commercial. Really? Oh, wow. Do you think they really do make it out of babies? Oh, oh for fuck's sake. Bloody sir. hell! It must be 200 miles to Manchester, and I bet we've got to walk the whole blooming way! What are you talking about, Rick? I'm the greatest hitchhiker in the galaxy. <laughs> See, he told you so. Evening Officer, University Challenge, Scumbag College. Yeah, Scumbag College? You were supposed to be here two weeks ago. Yeah, well, we had to walk the last 200 miles. Didn't you get our message? Neil, why didn't you phone our message? You did get a message, yes. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, no, heavy. The coins keep coming out. Beep, beep, beep. Even the telephone hates me. Beep, beep, beep. I wish there were no machines and everybody led a pastoral existence. Trees and flowers don't deliberately cool you out and go beep in your ear. Yeah, that's the message. Didn't you get it? Yeah, that was on the 24th. You hang on. What's that? It's my mascot. A pig? No. It is. It's not. It's a ferret. It's a very deformed ferret. I'm glad Deformed? So severely deformed, in fact, that it looks a little bit like a pig. Looks exactly like a pig. Yes. Well, it certainly has been remarked upon. In fact. Just as John Hurt is known as the Elephant Man, Bacon Sandwich is... Bacon Sandwich! Ferret. Bacon Sandwich? Funny name for a ferret, isn't it? Aha! And that's where I had your fool, because it's not a ferret, it's a pig! <laughs> well done, Viv, you certainly got him there. Yeah, have you had enough Nazi, or do you Nazi. want some more? <laughs> Burn me. There's nothing someone called me a policeman the other day. <laughs> oh, that... Yeah. So good to see you, looking yes. good. Oh, well, you lost a lot of fur since we last met, and you're walking on two legs now, I see, but still the same old Bambi. <laughs> shut up, man, shut up. What's the matter? I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, Bambi. I'm just, like, remembering that bit when you got lost in the snow and, and the little rabbit found you. It's so what? beautiful. Yeah. I like the bit where you shoved a drill in the Virgin Otter's face. <laughs> wasn't in Bambi, Vivian. It was in the sequel, Neil. Bambi goes crazy ate bonkers with his drill and sex. Is that true, Bambi? Did you do a Disney nasty? <laughs> so what if I did? I was 
apologising, my life collapsed after about me. I was a lovable fool, all right? Unusable for anything else. I, I did the baby champ stuff, sure, thanks to my kid, but I was finished. When the porn bandit came along, I thought, well, this is where I get something back. It hadn't been for the child to present to University Challenge and start a new life, I'd be giving executive relief to woodland creatures to this very day. <laughs> well, you going to let us win? No, of course not. The posh kids win. They always do. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of University Challenge. This week, the teams represent Footlights College, Oxbridge. <laughs> yes, that's the spirit. And Scumbag College. Oh, aye. Up, scumbag. Up, scumbag. Ooh. See you, teddy bear. Come here. <laughs> yes, well, representing. <laughs> representing. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> Footlights, we have Lord Monte, Lord Snot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, they're all lords on this team. Monte, Lord Snot, <laughs> Miss Money Sterling, and Mr. Kendall Minkick. Mr. Kendall Minkick! <laughs> Representing Scumbag, we have Mike, Crick, uh, Vivian, <laughs> and Neil. Vegetable rights and peas. <laughs> so you'll start hippie. with ten, no confirm. Born in 1311 of Manchurian stock, he came to... Scumbag Neil. Uh, can I go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry you're barking up the wrong tree there. <laughs> Five point penalty to scumbag, full question to footlights, no conferring. He came to represent the modal cathartic slip wet of the Footlights Monty. Uh, now, uh, wasn't it? Wasn't it Monk to Wally to Honk? Yes, we were almost there. Can you give me any more? Certainly. Will 50 pounds do? Absolutely. Spot on. <laughs> well done, footlights, 10 points. And three bonus questions to you. What was the name of Battle the. Battle of Bannockburn. Battle of Bannockburn. Uh, yes, well, that's very well anticipated there. <laughs> Battle of Bannockburn, it is. What? Listen, sorry to hustle you or anything, Bambi, but I, I really do need to go to the toilet. Really bad, you know? Yes, well, the second bonus question to Footlights, you lead by 15 points, but it's early days yet. Oh, no, guys, guys, I'm just going to have to wee on Lord Snot's head. <laughs> said, locks a lord in my bottoms on fire. Lillian! Yes, well, I can accept that the exact answer is Joan of Arc. Well done, <laughs> Footlights. Five points. And what is the chemical equation for... I've got a Porsche. <laughs> Hold on, is that Emma Thompson? No. Exactly what I've got written on the card, but I knew your father, so footlights see by 25. I knew your father. Daddy sends hugs. Daddy sends hugs. Fingers on the buzzers. Who is the richest person in the world? Elon Musk. Scumbag Vivian. What? <laughs> We're getting thrashed. We're getting completely thrashed. I'm only really just not. <laughs> Someone's put a P next to Rick's name, so it says prick. <laughs> <laughs> Some way we can cheat. Guys, guys, look, it's, it's beginning to seem bad, oh. guys, please. <laughs> it's very simple now. Use the jug. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll have to hurry you. I'll have to hurry you. Who is the richest person in the world? Footlights snot. It's, it's me, isn't it? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Your father's multinational collapsed only this morning. Ha! Ah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with the score... <laughs> With the score still standing at 25 to nothing, here goes... I'm completely bloody sick of this! <laughs> Give us some easy ones, Bambi! You big bottom ball! See, now, if this happened on University Challenge, I'd actually watch it. Relax, we can handle this, Vivian. Ah, don't! It's oh, fuck! <laughs> A 
Okay, Bambi, let's hear another. So here goes with the start of the ten. What is the <laughs> record number of marshmallows stuffed up one nostril? Scumbag, Mike. Uh, 604, Toxtus O'Grady, USA. I told you that, Mike, you bloody cheat! <laughs> <laughs> ten points, Scumbag, and your question. Who produced the world's stickiest Oh, logo? come on! <laughs> uh, Toxtus O'Grady. Correct, five points. You bum bag! You bum bag! The world's stupidest bottom burp. <laughs> uh, Rick, Britain! <laughs> uh, Rick, Britain! <laughs> it is not! And finally, and finally, for five bonus points to take you into the lead, who's been tampered with my question cards? It was me! It was me! It was me! It was me! Buns covered with human beings the size of amoebas. Your jumbo get that, didn't you, a softness? Anyway, as I was saying, rather interesting feeling. That is, you know, this is so weird sometimes, isn't it? Like the, the premise. All along there were the fucking amoebas on this scientist's little piece of plastic, and he's just fed them to an elephant. Holy Rick could come up with stuff something like this. Anyway, was that Emma Thompson? Featuring Motorhead, Robbie Coltrane, Ben Elton, Stephen Fry, Townsend Heatley. It was! It was Emma Thompson! Fuck it! The amount of stars in this episode! Ben Elton, Stephen Fry, Hugh Laurie, Emma Thompson, Griff Reese Jones, Mel Smith. In one episode! And Motorhead! Jesus Christ! Nineteen eighty-four. It must have just been the perfect time, point in time where they were all not quite as big as they are now. That they could afford to have all of them together on one show like this. But that's some going, that isn't it? Bloody hell! All of them together on the same show. That's mental. I lost a ton, but I put it straight back on. Robbie Coltrane, Ben Elton, Stephen Fry, Tamsin Heatley, whoever that is, Hugh Laurie, many men. Tony Robinson. Isn't he the something correspondent for the BBC? Emma Thompson, Griff Reese Jones, you must have asked of you Mel Smith. Which you weren't prepared to give. Wow. Um, I think on Star Power alone, you've got to give the best episode title so far, so far title to this one because it's just full of people that went on to become absolutely massive. You know, Hugh Laurie, massive actor known around the world. If anything, he went on to become bigger in America than he was here. And you've got Stephen Fry, Robbie Coltrane, who everyone knows as Hagrid. Emma Thompson. I didn't even know that she started in television. I thought she was straight into movies. Jesus Christ. And Motorhead. <laughs> wow. That's that that is really surprising. Can't believe they're all together in the same one. Fucking hell. Emma Thompson, Robbie Coltrane. When they'd end up working together on Harry Potter, wouldn't they? Robbie and Emma. He was Hagrid and she was Trelawney. I think. Emma Thompson played Trelawney, didn't she? Fuck off. Where the fuck's that supposed to be?
Yeah, Emma Thompson. Dame Emma Thompson, should I say. I'm sorry, I just can't get over that. I can't get over the fact that all those stars were in this one episode. Not just the actors, but, you know, the band as well. Who's Townsend Heatley, though? She was in The Bill, The Young Ones, Horrid Henry, Fimbles, The Tweenies. Oh, she was in The Tweenies, apparently. How would you know? They all wore costumes. Little robots and various... Oh, she's a children's TV actress then, basically, so that's why I don't remember her. Tony Robinson. Oh, I do recognise him. Yeah. Oh, he's Baldrick in Blackadder. Oh, yeah, of course he is. Right. There you go. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, getting a bit carried away here. Oh, he's a sir. Sir Tony Rob... Fucking hell, so you've got Dame Emma Thompson and Sir Tony Robinson appearing in the same episode of The Young Ones. Any of the, any of those others that went on to become sirs or what? I don't think Q Laurie's a sir yet, is he? But he should be. Stephen Fry should be a sir. Isn't he a sir? No, he's not. I'm sure he was a sir, Stephen Fry. Hugh Laurie should definitely be knighted. Anyway. Yeah. So that's uh, the end of the episode of uh, The Young Ones. We've started Series 2 now, the final series. Um, definitely the best episode so far. Really bizarre premise, uh, again. It's really weird. <laughs> it can get tiresome following it sometimes. Um, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good, and just to see all those huge stars together in one episode, it's really quite re remarkable, you know. I mean, this was made in 1984, so it would have been easier to convince them to star in... Mind you, you know, this is series two, so it had already had its massive impact and connected with all the young people in the UK, which is what it did. That was clear from um, Rick's interview on the Wogan show when he was asking him about the young ones. He mentioned how all the young students in the country had immediately identified with the first series of it. So maybe they were all just jumping on the coattails of that. But either way, it made for a great episode. You have some real star power there. So it, it worked. Even the... Like the backups, you know, Griff Rhys Jones, Mel Smith, even I know who they are. I haven't really watched anything they've done, but I know who they are. Wasn't he in? I'm sure he was in this. Yeah, he was. That's where I... Yeah. <clears throat> it's a great film, that. If you've never seen it, I've got it on DVD. I had it on video when I was a kid. And I haven't had a VHS player for about ten years. And I've spent years looking for it online. Could never find it, so I just bought it on eBay. About a year ago. That's how much I enjoy that film. But, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, so, thanks everybody for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Is this the biggest episode in terms of the actors that they get for it? Or oh, have we got more big stars coming? 
surely Motorhead are going to be the biggest band that we see on it, right? Surely they are. I don't remember any of the others. I don't, you know, I, I didn't even know any of the others. I don't think. Maybe I knew some of them. It, I, I just their names weren't there. So, but uh, yeah, really good episode. Really funny. Fantastic to see so many huge stars. And um, yeah, bring on series two. <laughs> So, thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Good night.